So in the case of Pig Safe, for example, there's a slaughterhouse not very far from where Anita lives, and so just down the street from where she lives is an intersection at right at Lakeshore <clears throat> where the trucks come through uh, on their way to the slaughterhouse full of livestock, full of pigs. And so a vigil is held three times a week where um, people gather at this intersection. They stand on the island and they're in the middle of the road with you know, various signs saying go vegan or you know, your, your meat had a face, that sort of stuff. Um, and, and so they, and they hold signs and, and they hand out leaflets. And so when the, when the traffic's moving, I mean, they just hold up their signs and they wave to the trapper driving by and sometimes they get honks. Other times they get people yelling, I love bacon. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the traffic stops, when the light turns red and they're forced to, to the traffic is forced basically to be face to face to the, the people at the vigil, they try to they try to get them to accept leaflets. So Toronto Pig Safe has leaflets made up with information on some of the things that happen to the to the animals that maybe a lot of people don't realize. Uh, tips on going vegan, that sort of stuff. Reasons why you might want to go vegan. So they're actually going up to cars and <coughs> yeah, they walk right up to information the... to drivers, passengers. Yeah, they actually walk up to the vehicles and they sort of give them a sign, like, you know, would you like a leaflet and would you like a flyer and, you know, some of them roll down their window and some of them don't. Yeah, so. And what about the, the trucks, the livestock trucks? They, do they come close to this island? Yeah, well, they do. Um, some of them try to avoid, like, some of them will stop, like, if they see that the light's going to change, they'll try to, they'll actually stop before they reach the island and leave a big gap so that the vigil attendees can't get close to the truck because the vigil attendees walk right up to the truck and they step, you know, right, well, I mean, the island, is, the truck pulls up right beside the island, so you're literally face to face with the animals when the truck stops there. And so the vigil attendees will just take their cameras and, you know, put their camera lens right in, into them. Like, but there are vent holes for the animals and they'll literally just put the camera in the hole and reach in and, and touch the animals and sometimes give them water or watermelon sometimes if it's, the weather's bad. Right, if it's hot. Yeah. So, truck drivers don't like that. And, you know, the, the, they'll use the excuse. They'll say, well, it gets the, it, get, it stresses the animals, it gets them worked up. But I don't think they care about that. I don't, I don't think that's true. And, and I mean, it, it may be true that it works the animals up a little bit, but it doesn't send them into a frenzy or anything. So I, I, I think they're just, the truck drivers are just saying that as an excuse because they don't want us there. I mean, there have been a couple of truck drivers apparently that have been kind of receptive and had conversations. It really seems to matter what, I've really noticed watching the people doing this, the vigil attendees who are doing the outreach, I really noticed that the approach makes a big difference. There's a lot more, the, the recipients are much more receptive if the vigil attendees are happy and smiling and, and courteous and, you know, um, if they're more aggressive, um, you know, sort of, you shouldn't be doing this, um, then it, 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 there, there seems to be a lot less reception. People that. get their backs up. They, yeah, they get yeah. defensive and, yeah. What is the... Um Farm, was it firm response? Yeah, I'm smiling because I, I knew what you were going to say. I, yeah. The rapid response team to activists on, or whatever. Do you know even what it's called? Um, I don't remember the, what, the, what the response team is called. There's a, there's a, there's a farm advocacy, advocacy group. Uh, I think they, I think they, I think they represent farms nationally plain to at least. Um, so so this farm and food care group um, have set up a hotline with an emergency response team apparently um, so that if you're a farmer and you have animal rights activists show up to do say a vigil near your property or a protest at a, you know at, near your facility you can call this hotline and supposedly a rapid response team can be sort of summoned 
Now we haven't seen them yet. This we've only recently learned about this in the last couple of weeks. Um, I've tried to reach them. I've I've tried to contact Fireman Food Care, and now I've had no response. Now I don't know if that's just because they don't want to talk to me, but also um, somebody pointed out to me the other day that their site had been down for a few days at least. And I don't know if it's been back up or not. So I don't know if the group is really small and, and not as organized as they appear to be, or I'm not sure what that's all about, but, so, I don't know, and I, and I don't know, I don't know that we will encounter them throughout the course of this film, because I didn't see anything that suggested that if you were a slaughterhouse, you could call them, I think it's, I think it's for farmers only, yeah. that's the impression I got anyway. So the focus of the vigils is always slaughterhouses. Uh, it has been, yes. Chicken save, Toronto chicken save, Toronto pig save, Toronto cow save, yes. Okay. Um, although, um, some of the other groups, um, like for example, um, the, one, the save group in New York, I don't even remember what they call themselves, I don't know if they're farm animal save New York, or Pig Safe New York, New York Pig Safe. Anyway, um, they're finding that there are no slaughterhouses uh, in their area, and so they go and they they hold vigils at markets. I guess I was talking to Miriam. She's a woman that started the, the New York group when she was visiting in Toronto. And animals beyond borders. And she was saying that there's a market where you can actually just sell animals on the street, live livestock, right on the street. And so they they go to there and, and they hold their vigils. Wow. So, yeah, and, and, I, and this girl we were mentioning from Thunder Bay, for example, um, apparently there's a, a station where, because of the location of the, the Thunder Bay, and on the highway, on the Trans-Canada Highway, apparently uh, there's a rest spot for, for truckers and, and livestock livestock transporters can, can stop there and have their animals fed apparently so so for example the, I think she's going to investigate that maybe she'll pull vigils there if she can so it doesn't necessarily have to be you know sp specifically targeting slaughterhouses it's, it's, it's to bear witness for the plight of farm animals so. at this point there haven't been any vigils at farms, so specifically? Not that I'm aware of, no, I don't think so. No. So would you say that your experience of the vigils in Toronto is that they have a dual purpose? Well, that's really a question for, for Anita and Paul and Mary to answer, but... Okay. But since you're asking me, I, I can give my two cents, I guess. Yeah, I think... I think the... They have multiple purposes. On the one hand, they're transformative to the people who attend. It's it's one thing to intellectually understand that we shouldn't do a certain thing for moral reasons, but it's 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 really another to witness. You know, I can intellectually know that it's wrong to say, for example, um, use safe weapons of war that that are likely to have you know collateral damage on civilians I can I can, intellectually I know that's wrong but after after bearing witness at, at save vigils I know that not only not only do I intellectually know it's wrong to use those weapons but but if I were to visit an area where innocent people have been killed and seen some of the aftermath um, I would sense a deeper understanding, a, a deeper uh, realization to how wrong it is. That's, so, so for the attendees of the vigils, it, there's there's something emotional that happens. Whereas you can know intellectually that something's wrong, to the point where you even choose not to participate in it. But by seeing by seeing things up close, there's a, there's another there's another layer of understanding that I can't quite explain. So that's part of it. Um, the other part of it is um, to hopefully convince some of the slaughterhouse workers that they're, they should maybe consider a different line of work. Um, or not should, maybe they should consider a different line of work. Um, 
I don't think it has a whole lot of effect that way. I, I know some do. I know that they, you know they, they develop relationships with a few of the workers. A lot of the workers just tend to ignore them. Some of them are a little bit hostile. Most of them won't look for another job. Um, but they try. You know, they they, they they hand out leaflets to the slaughterhouse workers and that sort of stuff. Um, so there's that effort. But I think the, 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 the other thing that's really important, though, is that they, they take the images then and they share them. They take photos, a lot of footage at the vigils of the animals, and then they share them online. And that has a big, that has a big impact on people. Um, you know, I mean, the percentage of vegans these days, granted it's still very low, but it is, it's increasing significantly. And those images help speed that along. When people see a pig looking into the camera lens, it, it sort of creates a bit of a connection that, that it shows the individual animal as opposed to the, the, the group, the, the, the concept of just of pigs. Right. You know, which for some people causes them to pause for a moment and think. Now, obviously, a lot of people just don't have the empathy or, or, or even if they do for some reason, it just doesn't sink in. But, um, but, but some people do. Some people stop and think and, and, and so it's, it's a, it's like a, I, Paul York once made an analogy to uh, water droplets on a stone. You know, the individual droplets don't appear to do anything, but if you come back in a hundred years, it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's created a divot. So that's sort of what bearing witness does is it, it we keep taking the images and sharing them and putting out the message. And one by one, we're making the conversion in the world.